The business of operations management is difficult, particularly in large enterprises like banking, insurance, and other services companies with teams of hundreds and thousands around the globe. Now add in recent pandemic forcing the workplace to change forever. Managers and employees are under immense pressure to get work done, while also finding ways to balance performance and well-being. The complexity is building, and it can be difficult to find the answers. This podcast, AO On Air, partnered with ActiveOps, is designed to help identify areas that will help employees, managers, and senior leaders find solutions to the challenges within operations management. The future of work will take all departments, such as HR, IT, and ops, aligned along with a steady dose of innovation to succeed. We'll bring you topics, thought leadership, and simple plans to help lead your teams into the future of work. A hybrid work world that will learn from one another and truly act globally, breaking down the silos of older management models for new ways of working. Welcome to the journey. Now let's begin. Hello and welcome again to AO on Air. My name is Michael Cups. I'm your host today and I'm really excited about my guest. Uh, our objective here with the AO on Air podcast is to really bring a global feel, a global reach to operations management. Not only the, the challenges that people face, but the opportunities that may be uh, recognized in other regions or other opportunities in other companies. So I'm really excited to bring Jane Lambert on board today. Jane is the general manager of Asia Pacific for Active Ops. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Michael, for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, excellent. So I understand. I looked at your LinkedIn profile not too long ago, and, uh, and, okay. and it was interesting to me because you've been helping people through active, active ops with consulting and bringing people on to the methodology and, and training and consulting, and, and of course, in your general role today, your general manager role, that is. Uh, but I, ended, I looked at your, uh, your past, and you are actually a senior manager of workforce planning, so you've lived it. You've walked in those shoes. I have. Yeah, no, I originally started in ops management and, and workforce management teams. So totally understand the challenges that organizations are going through at the moment, because it was just something that I had to deal with as well on a regular basis. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. And that perspective probably lends itself some help with you, you and your team and, and your customers. So, you know, when we think about Australia, which is where you where you're based and your overall region, uh, even prior to the pandemic, you you guys faced challenges that other uh, uh, organizations around the globe didn't with your wildfires in Australia. Uh, mm. I mean, it's just been kind of a hectic, uh, uncertain world for you guys there. Yeah, it has. We unfortunately live in a country where we get extremes. Um, so flooding in one part and then we'll have severe uh, fires in another part. Um, so it does mean it, it means it's very challenging for organizations to be able to do what they need to do and make sure that their staff can be available, but at the same time supporting them through that process. Because yeah. who wants to be thinking about work 100% of the time when you're dealing with a fire or a natural disaster. So one thing I think Aussie organizations are particularly good at is they do care about their people. But I guess the challenge they have, though, is being able to visualize how they can help them. And, and, you know, when you've got a team that's not working in the same office for those very reasons, they can't get in there because of those natural disasters. How do you understand how they're going other than picking up the phone if they're still working yeah. um, and having to work? And the planning it just adds another element to it, right? So It does, absolutely. Excellent. So let's back up just a bit before the pandemic, before maybe even the wildfires, uh, operations managers, operations leaders were looking to innovate anyway. They, they, they had challenges that they've had for years and they're already changing. So could you identify some of those challenges that they were faced even before the uncertainty kicked in? Yeah, look, absolutely. So I think one thing that um, a lot of Australian companies are particularly good at is, is really constantly evolving their businesses and looking for new ways of doing things. And one of the challenges that they do face is, um, you know, a couple of things. One is capability and leadership to be able to have the skills and tools to be able to manage not only customer expectations, but also be able to forecast and plan that how their people are going to be utilised, the skills that are required to do the work. And particularly at an executive level, having that visibility that links to a strategic goal and outcome has been really challenging for them. And we've had quite a few executives say to us, even the basic fundamentals of visibility, you know, I can't see what my people are doing. How can I get that visibility has been an ongoing challenge for quite a few. Or it's been difficult because they've been broken into silos because different executives have brought in different technologies. They don't align, they don't connect, they don't feed each other data. And also, to add complexity to it, different interpretations, different definitions of metrics and outcomes. So 
Common language wasn't in place, um, which made it very challenging to be how to have consistent conversation. You know, left arm not talking to the right arm. No cohesion or ability to come together and work and plan as one. And so that's that has been a challenge for a lot of organisations. And a lot of the conversations I'm having with either people who reach out who want to know more about what we do or even our existing client portfolio, it's more about how do I get visibility? How do I help my people deliver the outcomes I need to be able to make us a successful organisation and drive those customer outcomes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those silos. You said you said a lot of key words there that I think everybody experiences in large companies, particularly. So let's fast Absolutely. forward now. So we we've gone through a thirteen month, eighteen month, whatever period it's been. With you, maybe more with the the, the fires that you had. Um, mm. What changed with the challenges for an operations leader? I mean. A lot has changed. Um, look, globally, we've got this pandemic, right? And in Australia, it continues to be a big problem for us. And, you know, the executives that I speak to, you know, even six months ago had a very clear plan or what they thought was going to be a clear plan for how they were going to manage the next 12 months. And then the pandemic has really disrupted that. So we don't have as many immunised people as we would like in Australia. We're still suffering from lockdowns. I, at the moment, am in a lockdown, uh, as is other parts of our country. And so when you're trying to manage a business, but you can't have your people in the office, you have to have great data to be able to help you to understand, well, how do I keep this business going? How do I help my people to be able to see what's required? And how do I skill and, and um, equip my leaders with what they need to be able to deliver the outcomes we still need to deliver? Yeah, that's And I think in Australia, sorry to interrupt you there, Mike, but I think at the moment in Australia, the big thing is about survival because, you know, there are a lot of organisations here that unfortunately will not survive because they just don't have the right tools to help them get through it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's well said. And I didn't mind that interruption at all, because it was important to say the the interesting thing to us as we look at organizations around the globe, some returning to office, some not returning to office. And maybe in your case, some were, like you said, preparing to return to office, but they had to scrap those plans and do something else. I mean, do you have some tips about just managing that uncertainty or or, or even how to plan a return to office when you don't know when the government's going to let you? Look, I think it comes down to being very agile. You need to have both the, the tools, the people with the right skills and the ability to pivot at any moment, particularly here in Australia, but it's also around the globe. I mean, I was only reading yesterday that other parts around the world are now also getting influxes of the virus where they're having to reconsider whether they can go back in the office again, whether they're going to have to go back to remote working. If you don't have the right infrastructure and capability in your business to be able to right. pivot at a minute's notice, it's going to be um, a real problem for a lot of organisations. And it was interesting, McKinsey only yesterday released an article about companies are really starting to prioritize what's important for them at the moment. And one of the key things is about, you know, what is the new skills and workforce that I need, but also what are the tools and the data sets I need to be able to, you know, survive this and, and continue to do what I need to do, not just for the company and their outcomes, but for my people too, you know, people yeah. need the support at this time, particularly if they've been in lockdown for a long time, like some of the, the employees here in Australia have experienced. That's right. That's and it's interesting. I was going to ask you more about how does it go to a steady state, but we don't know when steady state will return. So, it, but you yeah. mentioned about the people, and one thing that I always find interesting when I read articles, they talk about what the executives are thinking in, in mahogany row, if you will, and they talk about the how the employees are feeling, but they kind of leave out that middle management layer, which is they're really in the fire every day, and they've got to deal with both yeah. ends of it. So, any any thoughts or tips on on that kind of management layer? Yeah, look, absolutely. I think that a lot of organisations need to make their HR partner their best friend. They're really going to have to rethink about what does my future workforce look like? And when it comes to your employees in particular, research is really showing whether you look at the Microsoft studies or whether you look at the McKinsey studies or even the Gartner studies, um, they're all saying that the shift has really changed. So with COVID, people have experienced a new way of working. So for those that had the tools and the data and the skill set to be able to transition their people to a work from home environment, what it's meant is that people have seen a new way of working that perhaps they hadn't thought of before and they like it. I was only talking to um, one of my customers this morning and he said to me, he is absolutely loving working from home. And if he can make it work, he doesn't want to go back into the office. And he works for one of our major banks here. So I was kind of thinking, you know, how do organizations keep this agility going? And the best way is get that 
upfront discussion happening with your HR partners, have a conversation with your people about what their wants and needs are, and be prepared to feel a little bit uncomfortable about it. Because I think one thing that's really come through is that a lot of organizations thought that people aren't productive when they're working from home. You know, they're too busy watching Netflix and doing all those other things. But data is telling us the complete opposite. You know, the customers that use our solutions are finding that people are more productive at home. Commutes to the office are reduced, so they can spend that time actually doing things that they, they need to be doing. You know, they've got the ability of, from a mental health perspective to be closer to their loved ones and feel supported whilst doing their job at the same time. It's not for everyone, and this is why it's really important to get your HR partner involved, because obviously there are some circumstances that, you know, working from home is not suitable. But for the majority of the workforce, don't think that you can't have a successful organization with a hybrid workforce because you absolutely can and data is telling us that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've mentioned it several times uh, about data, the need for data, insights, transparency, that what, what types of data are companies lacking or what, what types of data maybe are needed to, to be successful in a hybrid world? Yeah, look, there's a, a few with that. Um, and the first one is visibility, just complete visibility of person's performance, uh, the work itself, how that's moving. Um, and in real time, you know, if you haven't got that information in real time, you're not going to be able to respond and, and course correct in a timely manner. Health scores, you know, having the data to have a look and show you, is a person slowing down? You know, are there large gaps in what they're doing throughout the day? Is there something going on that I need to reach out and go, hey, are you okay? So things like data gatherers on your desktops, which are really helpful because they can be used anywhere, whether they're working from home or whether they're working in the office. Um, you can actually use them in an airport if you get the luxury of actually going back into an right. airport. Um, um, but, you know, having that enterprise flexible tool set that's going to cover all those key metrics that you need from an organizational perspective, but also gives you those health factors and indicators that are really important to supporting your people at the same time. Right. And probably being consistent, too, about that measurement, I would think. Absolutely. So that point I made earlier about some of the pre-pandemic issues where, and look, these have been issues that have been around for a while, right, where there's too many silos, there's too many inconsistencies in the measurements, there's too many inconsistencies into the data sets. COVID has really expediated that process to say to organisations, we need one solution for all our people that is exactly the same, same metrics, same language, same, you know, calculations and outcomes. So we are cohesive and we are working towards the same thing, but also talking the same language. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned something earlier that I, that I wanted to circle back on. You, you mentioned that some companies may not survive because of old management practices. It, it, the reverse could also play, right? If people do this right, yeah. if companies do this right, it could be a significant competitive advantage. Absolutely. And, and particularly, you know, last week when we talked at the SSON event about the future of digital workforce and hybrid working um, in shared services, they are a competitive industry. You know, at the moment, if you can't deliver at the right price, at the right pace for your customers, the choices are so diverse, they'll move on in a heartbeat. So, you know, being able to process things at the right cost and the right time with the right skill set is really important for them. So if people don't act quickly at this time, because I think one thing in Australia we've noticed considerably is the pace at which digital transformation is occurring. Um, you know, it is varied around the world, but in Australia particularly, it's going at pace. So in Asia Pacific, if you're not looking to get your strategy in place or even at start having a think about what's my first iteration of my strategy and have a, a B and a C plan as the as the virus evolves and you know as we perhaps go back to some kind of normal um, you know you're potentially going to lose clients because yeah. if you can't be seen to be flexible and be driving those right outcomes and providing them the service they want whilst managing your people at the same time um, you may lose business and as a result of that you yeah. could end up out of business at the same time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think the acceleration of innovation is, is, is if, we, if there is a silver lining to all the things that we've lived through, that may be it because companies are just pushing through and finding new ways to innovate. So let, let's, absolutely. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I agree. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. So let's go, let's step back a little bit and talk about your region. It's, it's, it's fascinating to me because people might think that you're from Australia and that's one continent, but the reality is you, your region is massive and you've got varied types of businesses. You've got companies based there, headquartered there. You also have U.S. companies and U.K. companies that are doing outsourcing to Philippines, Malaysia, et cetera. So you probably see both sides of not only the service industry, but the head, headquarters type of industry as well. Do you have any insights absolutely. there? Absolutely. 
Yeah, definitely. One thing um, Australia is known for uh, in particular is that cross continent relationship through an organization. So yeah, in Philippines, we absolutely support com uh, companies that uh, are also based in the in the US, in Australia as well. We also have the headquarters for a lot of overseas organizations as well. And one thing that is so critical when you have a cross continent organization is visibility and being able to respond to each other in a timely manner, have that consistency again that we spoke about earlier is so key. So regardless of where you sit in the world, if you don't have the right data to be able to help you to pivot, lever, drive the right outcomes in your organization, um, it has a knock-on effect. And there are organizations that are still grappling with that. And, you know, they do have another part of their business overseas and they've got no visibility. They don't understand what's happening in that region or why they're not getting the results they were expecting. So it really gets back to that point is if you don't have an enterprise solution that gives you that visibility, it's so problematic. Yeah. And it creates a lot of pressure to what you were saying for that middle management team who unfortunately get the below pressure and the top-down pressure. Yeah, and and I would say I would go back to your common language statement too about operations. You need a common language to talk about operations, and you see Absolutely. that that's difficult between if you if you choose an outsourcing, say the Philippines, and you you're running a business in the U.S. Do you see a uh, that that common language is easy to establish between a BPO partner and a and a company? Absolutely. Um, you know, we found with our experience with the existing customers we have who have their um, businesses across multiple continents that once you implement that common language, you've got a team that's cohesive and working together and, and there's no misunderstanding as to what you're talking about or what you're driving towards. And I also have to highlight here, I think, Michael, the importance of top-down engagement, having that senior leader drive, the setting of those expectations, the clear direction is really important in the long-term success of that as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Anything else you want to say about the, uh, uh, the the region while we're while we're here? I know you've got the Olympics competing in your region right now, actually. Yeah, we're doing really, really well. I'm, I'm very excited. It's been nice while I've been in lockdown to be able to watch that and, and get some normality. And the, I think the Aussies are doing really, really well. Fourth very on the, the ladder the last time I checked. Um, look, I think the main thing is those that don't respond now are going to find themselves in a very difficult situation. And, and look, that's not a criticism. That's a reality. Yeah. Um, I think in Australia, the speed at which change is occurring at the moment is incredible. And it's probably the fastest we've seen in a long time. And it's because executives here are really concerned that if they don't act now, they don't invest the money in the right spaces. And that has shifted. So a lot of organizations are taking a step back and going, okay, where was this spend originally going? Where does it now need to be focused? Um, you know, if they don't do that and pivot at that right time, I think they are going to be left behind. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in this new world we're living in. And so they will be ahead of the game because yeah. they've taken that proactive approach to move forward and get the right tools and techniques that they need. Yeah, absolutely. That that uncertainty is going to continue. Maybe that's the only certainty we know is that it's going to be uncertain. <laughs> so, 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 so the last, look, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and I think you hit a really valid point there. You know, when you are in a world of uncertainty, make sure you're controlling the things that you can and do the things that you can, because that is going to put you in the right position moving forward. Absolutely. So, so if someone watching this wants to get in touch with you, how can they, how can they find you? Absolutely. First of all, I would go to activeops.com, our website, and put in a request to meet with us. Or you can email me directly here in Australia uh, at jane.lambert at activeops.com. We'd love to speak to anyone who's interested in learning more about how they can uh, develop the right infrastructure and skills and techniques to live in a hybrid world. Excellent. So, so Jane, wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for joining us today on AO on Air. Uh, and to everybody watching, we're excited that you you joined us today, and we hope that you can see that the, the challenge of hybrid work uh, and the return to office is just going to consistently be a challenge for all operations. And we, we hope to bring you good insights, good strategies, good ideas to help you on the journey as well. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. ActiveOps is a management process automation company servicing global enterprises with large numbers of people engaged in clerical administrative work. If you reduce what our software does to its simplest, it enables our clients to more precisely balance work and capacity, which is really hard to do both consistently and at scale. We have about 165 people in sub offices around the world, and we have about 80 enterprise clients. Our customers are insurance companies, banks, outsourcers which service that type of community. 
they are too big to fail organizations, which is really important in terms of the uh, per persistence of our client base. And our software supports them providing globally significant infrastructure, your pay credit card payments, your, um, you know, the check clearing systems, the kind of things that we all take for granted but have to work in society.